what's up with Zillica? Could this be a potential moonshot? Hi guys, this is Guy, and in this video, I'm going to be answering this and many more questions. Just a few quick things though before I dive in. Firstly, this is not investment advice and I am not your financial advisor. It's presented for your educational purposes only. Also, the Coin Bureau is completely independent. We don't take any payments at all for our reviews. Oh yes, and if you're new here, then you may want to hit up that subscribe button. We release regular daily videos that you don't want to miss. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get back to Zillica. Zillica was the first public blockchain that effectively implemented sharding. Essentially, sharding is a feature that will allow a blockchain to scale linearly as it grows. There are now a plethora of projects that are trying to use sharding to increase transaction throughput and scale their blockchains. And this is for a good reason. Blockchain bloat is a problem that is now facing many of the largest blockchains, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. Moreover, this blockchain bloat slows down the network and hikes the transaction fees, not the best scenario for mass adoption. However, with Zillica's approach, there could theoretically be no limit on the number of transactions processed per second. Pretty mind-blowing, to be honest. So then, how exactly does it work? Well, let's start with a look at their technology. Now, as I mentioned, central to Zillica is their sharding-based blockchain. With most other blockchains, as more nodes are put onto the network, the harder it is to reach consensus. Hence, as these blockchains grow, processing transactions and propagating blocks takes longer. Zillica, on the other hand, basically rebuilds the blockchain architecture from scratch. The model they're using has a hybrid consensus protocol that will increase throughput with every additional 600 nodes on the network. This works by dividing the work done on the network with throughput increasing for every 600 new nodes. The result is a network that scales with an increase in its size. The team has actually done some tests on this and with 1800 nodes, the network is able to process about 1200 transactions per second. Increase that to 2,400 nodes, and you can theoretically get over 1,700 transactions per second. Now, compare that to Ethereum, for example, which has about 25,000 nodes on its network and can only process about 15 transactions per second. Now, this is all possible because sharding breaks up the number of nodes on the network into these groups of 600, where each individual group is a shard. These divide the work being done on the network with each shard responsible for just a portion of the network transactions. I won't go into the exact mechanics of sharding here, but we have covered it in a much more extensive piece that I've linked to below if you're interested. Moving on though, another important component of the Zillica blockchain is their consensus method. Zillica uses a hybrid consensus mechanism consisting of proof-of-work and Byzantine fault tolerance. Proof-of-work is not used as it is in traditional blockchain mining. Instead, each node begins by completing a proof-of-work hash. This does not result in any blockchain reward, but instead is used to establish the node identity. By forcing nodes to establish their identity, the Zillica network avoids any potential Sybil attack. This is where a bad actor would create multiple identities in an attempt to overwhelm the network. Once the node's identity is proven through proof of work, the node can be assigned a shard. Shards find consensus through Byzantine fault tolerance, which is a high throughput consensus mechanism with finality. This mechanism is being used by a number of other projects, including Neo and Hyperledger, etc. Don't worry if this is slightly confusing. We've explained it in more detail in our complete Zillica review, which is linked to, yep, below. Now, much like Ethereum, external developers can also code smart contracts on the Zillica blockchain. The Zillica team have developed their own language, which is used to program these contracts. It's called Scylla. It's a functional programming language that allows for static checks and formal verifications. This helps users to verify a contract is safe before using it. There are a number of pros and cons that this has over Ethereum's solidity. I won't cover these here, but you can read more about it in our long-form review. Now, 
Let's move on to Zillica's token, shall we? These are known by the ticker ZIL and they provide the fuel for the Zillica ecosystem. Much like other smart contract based platforms, it's used to pay for transaction fees, incentivize miners and for gas to execute the contracts. ZIL tokens were initially released as an ERC20 token through an Ethereum based ICO that took place back in January of 2018. This was a combination of a private and a crowd sale that saw the project raise over $40 million at the time, so it's quite well funded. Price movements since then have been wild. They reached an all-time high of over 20 cents in May of 2019, but have been sliding ever since then. It's not all that bad though. Prices are still above the ICO price, which is much more than could be said for a number of other projects. In January of 2019, Zillica released their mainnet, which meant the issuance of their native ZIL tokens. You can exchange your ERC20 ZIL tokens for the native variant on any participating exchange. More on this in a bit. Now then, who is driving the Zillica project forward? The Zillica team is comprised primarily of PhDs in computer science with an academic background. In fact, Zillica was born from an R&D project of the National University of Singapore and after more than two years of work had a functioning blockchain before the Zillica ICO. There have been a few changes at the team since the ICO with former CEO and the former chief scientific advisor both stepping down from active roles and becoming advisors to the project. The Zillica developers have actually been quite busy at work. This is something that you can verify yourself if you head on over to their GitHub repository. So then, how are the markets shaping up for Zill? Zill is listed on a number of exchanges, including Binance, Huobi, Upbit, KuCoin, etc. Volumes appear to be well spread out across the exchanges, although Binance commands the lion's share of this volume. The order books appear to be quite voluminous and deep, great signs for the liquidity of the Zill token. Finally, in terms of offline storage, this will depend on what token variant you have. If you still have the ERC20 type, then there are a range of wallets that you can use. If you've already converted your token to the native version, then you have a more limited selection. The developers recommend the Moonlet wallet. This is actually a pretty nifty wallet. It will support .zil domain names, something that Zillica has implemented to provide human readable addresses. So then, what's the final take on Zillica? Well, I'm cautiously optimistic about it. There's no doubt that scaling is a pressing issue and there are numerous blockchains that see the need for innovative solutions. Many of these relate to off-chain scaling networks, whereas others use unique consensus methods. Zillica has built their solution from the ground up and they are the first public blockchain to launch with sharding. The hybrid consensus mechanism that they use is also quite unique and combines innovations that have been used with great effectiveness on other blockchains. Moreover, Zillica also functions as a developer blockchain where others can build decentralized applications, a great way to increase adoption of the network. The Zillica team is also quite strong and they've been active in their development. Their roadmap is exciting and I'm looking forward to the numerous updates that are in the pipeline. Now, of course, I'd be naive if I were to say that there are no challenges. Firstly, although Zillica has first mover advantage, there are a number of other projects that are building their own sharding solutions. Prime among these is Ethereum itself, with sharding being one of the most important EIPs in their roadmap. I'm also quite disappointed in the price of Zill. Although there was a minor uptick after the mainnet launch, they have continued a steady downward trend, something that may continue if markets remain in flux. I'll be keeping a close eye on Zillica over the coming months, and I'll keep you posted. And that's all, folks. But I'm curious, though. What do you think of Zillica? Do you have any questions for me? We'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Much more will be on its way to you very soon.